And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It is my favorite episode of the year. The Christmas episode. The only reason I got into entertainment in the first place was to make fun Christmas episode with my friends and fellow funny people. And eventually, we will get to that point where we bring on uh, guests and they sing and they have their talents and their acts and, you know, there's some sketches involved. And at the end, we all give a bunch of money to children's hospitals because that's what it's all about. It's the season of giving. I have a lot of thoughts on Christmas I'm going to share with you today. Obviously, there's going to be jokes intertwined and uh, have a little bit of life update stuff. And I also would like to say I will be singing as I do every Christmas episode. I'm singing two songs this year. Uh, also, as far as the charity thing goes, um, you could I just go ahead and, and give to whatever charity of your choosing. I chose St. Jude. As always, I like to give to the hospital, the children's hospitals. For me, again, I just want to make sure every kid gets to have a great Christmas. Okay, whatever circumstances they're in, it's um, I just want to make sure they have a great Christmas. And so I'm going to open this show, folks, in a very unusual way i think that's isn't that a lyric to some christmas song or something like that oh no the new old-fashioned way sorry <laughs> okay uh what song am i gonna sing this year I, I i know i'm gonna close with that one christmas song by nat king cole and i want to preface this by saying my voice is not uh fantastic okay i only do things in a certain vocal range and uh oh wait hold on i hear something uh i hear something else hold on i think I think I hear sleigh bells. Sleigh bells ring. Are you listening? In the lane, snow is glistening. I don't know the words. I'm looking them up. We're walking in a winter wonderland. Here we go. Gone away is the bluebird. And here to stay is the new bird. He sings a love song as we roll along. Walking in a winter wonderland. In the middle. Okay, I think we're good. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the the two bars. I'm getting a weird notification. It says problem saving local backup audio. I hope that means my singing uh is like not like gone. I would hate for my singing to go away after I just sing that beautiful rendition of w- walking in a winter wonderland. Now I- I'm sure it'd be much better if I had music accompanying me. I have perfect pitch syndrome. I also have uh, synesthesia, as I learned last night. I don't have real synesthesia. Just certain words have certain colors to me. It's not real synesthesia. A lot of people, it's very trendy to say you're synesthetic or whatever the term is because um, it makes you uh, appear more artsy, you know? And uh, like, let me run through some things. So May, June, and July are all yellow. February is red. October is orange. Uh, January is blue. Christmas, or Christmas. Uh, December is red. Um, April's green. And I'm trying to think of other if I have any other. I, I hope that makes sense to people. Otherwise, I might actually have synesthesia. Zero is green. All rounded letters and numbers are green, and all the sharp ones are red. Does that make sense? So whenever you've probably heard me talk about this, when I when things look sharp, I don't like it. Like I like things to look rounded. And if things like flow, feel like clouds, water, uh, I don't know. Uh, green light green uh, like I, I just like rounded objects in my mind if that makes sense so if i if i'm writing a joke and too many things are ta, ta, ba, ba, ta, too sharp i just think it's red and red to my mind is just like no red the color red to me anytime i want to block something out in my mind mentally i will the family feud x will pop up in my head that, uh, 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 that will pop up in my head that's so that's what i do and maybe I do have synesthesia. Maybe you guys are listening to this and you're like, yeah, idiot, you have synesthesia, okay? A-, a lot of people think it's trendy to say that they have things going on with them. And they don't. Maybe they want to get sympathy and maybe they want to just, and-, and maybe they're just trying to find an answer to something they can't answer themselves. I don't think I have synesthesia. I just think some words and color, or some words have colors to me. I think we all have that. A lot of people have feelings and, you know, uh, a word is like, oh, that feels like this or that. Like, uh, or names, names do that with me too. So like Trump to me, uh, Trump, think about that. This is not a political thing. This is strictly how my mind works. Trump. It's like, ta ta ta. so it's very sharp. It's a very sharp thing p- that p- at the end, the Trump p- that hurts. So that feels to me, it's like his name is like uh, up and down Trump, Trump, Trump. It's like, 
It's like that. So um, it's like when you're on a diving board. You're going up and up, but you don't get a jump in the water. And so all you feel is just that coarseness on the bottom of your feet. I can feel it now. The coarseness on the bottom of your feet that is the diving board. Gross. Don't like that feeling. Uh, Biden. Biden feels like when you're diving through the water. I can feel the water hit my fingers. And I'm not saying this is who I voted for because I like the name better. I'm just saying that's – I'm trying to give you a, 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 a topical name – differentiation so you understand what i'm trying to get at okay maybe it's also in my mind because one plays for the red team one plays for the blue team i don't know so what else oh i wrote a joke and i call these anti-jokes so the joke is the thing itself you know what i'm talking about the joke is the thing itself some people think that's a cop-out i wrote it last night in my in my bed and i've been sitting on it and mulling it over and i because i couldn't figure out the punchline i have the setup the alley-oop has been tossed. Now, who's going to be on the other end of that to slam it home? I don't know. So right now, it's just like, you know, all these politicians who downplay uh, the virus and downplay the mask mandates and, and the six feet separation and stuff like that are getting the vaccine first. OK, so the joke here is it's like so on the news, all these politicians and everything that downplay the virus are getting the vaccine first. That'd be like if all the politicians downplayed the virus and got the vaccine first, because there's nothing to compare this to. That's how dumb it is. And so that is what I like to call an anti-joke. You see a lot of anti-jokes on Twitter. I'm not saying I don't like them. I'm just saying anti people hear anti and they're like, oh, oh, oh. But anti to me is like the joke is the thing itself. So you adding anything is, and i and i tried to make punchlines like oh it's like a rich person and he goes to a homeless shelter and eats all the food because they don't really need it but that didn't make sense because the if i i'm talking really fast but if i so say a rich person came uh to a homeless shelter and ate all the food and and left that'd be what it was like okay but that doesn't work because i'm comparing how much they downplayed it right this is inside the joker jokester studio so I had to think of something else. I couldn't think of anything else last night. I'm just, if you have a better punchline, send it to me, and I'll steal it from you. All right. Um, let's see here. Also, here's a joke. And not really a joke, more so a question. The Surgeon General. What a terrifying name. Okay, what a terrifying name of a position. Your name, it's like Grand Executioner. Surgeon General. It, it, Grand Executioner. Surgeon General is a very scary name for for a big part of your job is just saying cigarettes are bad for you. It's a very scary name. Surgeon General. Surgeon General at your service. Uh I uh, what else could I I had I obviously we we're going to go through jokes here. Um what else? I don't think I have anything else. Um so today I went and played golf and I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted playing golf. I'm not fit for 18 holes. I don't know how those old men do it all the time. I'm playing golf on December 23rd. It's it's Festivus, the Seinfeld holiday. So to all those celebrating, I wish you a very, very merry Festivus. Uh, I think Hanukkah, is is that still going on? I know that happened. That was going on last week. So if that's going on, uh, I wish you a very happy Hanukkah. I don't know when Kwanzaa is. I apologize. Oh, here we go. Here we go. The reason this is going so fast is because it's a solo episode. We don't need to hear me talk for an hour, you know? So it'll probably be like 20, 25 minutes. Um, my family and I, we, are, we, get, we got a guitar for a young girl uh, as a gift. Her family's going through a very uh, trying time, and we wanted to make their Christmas a little bit better, so we got them a guitar. And so we had to go to the music shop, as one does to get a guitar. The music shop people used to scare me because... I lack mus a lot of musical ability. I play guitar. That doesn't mean I'm good at guitar. A lot of people do comedy. That doesn't mean they're good comedians. You know what I mean? And so when I go in there, I'm like, I'm just showing the utmost respect to not only them, but the, but the instruments themselves. And when I tell people what I did, they're like, you know you can just do that, right? Like, it's not a special thing. And I don't know why I had it reserved. And we'll talk about reservations later because I have reservations about Christmas. So I uh, walked in there all reserved alike. And, um, you know, they were nice to me and everything. And when they found out what we were doing, they were extra nice to us and really giving us a good rundown as to 
what we should look for in a guitar. And, you know, uh, they let me play play around with them. They're like, oh, yeah, you play too. Get a feel for it. And, uh, you know, I'm complimenting the, the, the people there. And he's like, yeah, this one sounds good. I'm like, well, the, the tone's all in your fingers, man. So you, you make it sound good. And he thought, he said, thank you very much. And that's a little guitar speak for you. When you tell someone their t- the tone is in their fingers, it means that they themselves are a good player, not the equipment that they're on. Okay. So that's a little bit of advice to all you uh, want to be guitarists out there. What else uh, happened to there? Oh, I finally, so I'm, I'm, I'm still obviously learning my scales and this and that, da, da, da. And I want to get good enough on my acoustic that I've been, I mean, I took lessons in middle school. So whenever I picked it back up when quarantine started, it wasn't as big of a, a transition. So, uh, you know, I'm playing around on that and having fun. And I just want to make sure I'm good on that. So that way, when I switch to an electric guitar, not necessarily switch entirely, but just buy one, I'm doing I'm not doing it a disservice. I don't know why I have so much respect for the instrument itself. It's very weird that I have that, but I do. And I I just don't want it like I don't want to spend a bunch of money on it and not give it the love and quality it deserves when I'm playing it. You know what I mean? I don't want to like treat it poorly, play it twice and get rid of it. That's dumb. I, I don't like that. And so I wanted to get get a, a, a Squire Strat. I like the Strat sound. I like the blues sound. I like listening to the old blues records. Uh, maybe it's because I'm from a southernish state. I don't know. Maybe the music feels better to me. I, I, I've seen these trying times that they're talking about in these blues songs. You know what I mean? Um, and, and the Squire Strat is cheaper than the regular Strat, Fender Stratocaster. And I... Um, all they had, they didn't have Squire Strats in my size. They had minis. And I was like, okay, I'm not going to have a mini. It's for babies, you know? And I asked them, I was like, is it okay if I take a Strat off the wall and play around with it? And they said, yeah, man, you know, do whatever you want to do. And I'm like, holy cow. And it felt really good in my hands. I, I had never felt like the the neck of a, of a Fender Strat before. And I like the, the smoothness of the neck. Obviously, it's going to be smooth. It's sanded down and glossed over and everything. But... It just felt really cool to play around on it, you know, uh, mess around with it, improv on it, because it's like, think of all the, mu- the musicians that I admired and all the artists that I liked growing up and listened to, and their their hands had also felt that same feeling on a, on a Fender Strat. You know what I mean? You know, uh, Hendrix and SRV and uh, Eric Clapton and John Mayer and all these guys that have held the, the, the uh, Strat and it well you know it felt really cool that i got to hold that and so like i carefully took it down and carefully put it back and they said thank you for being careful with it because you hear that clang noise in a guitar shop and everyone just drops what they're doing and just looks at the person i definitely did not want to be that guy and that brings us to another point about the guitar shop um i told they fixed my guitar for me over the summer and i came in and i didn't bring it in in a case because i i don't know why i didn't bring it in a case and um I was like, yeah, you might remember me. I was the idiot who brought his guitar in without a case uh, a couple months ago. And he goes, oh, that happens all the time, man. Don't worry about it. You you definitely didn't stand out in my mind. And I was like, thank God. I want to be as least noticeable as possible when it comes to music. Like if you have all these people making noise and stuff like that, these bad guys, and then you have these people that suck and they're at the very bottom. If I could just be a normal guy who slides through and plays around for fun, like that'd be fantastic. I don't want to get a reputation in the guitar shop. And they're like, you sound like George Costanza, which is wanting to hide in the middle. I said, uh, yeah, that's uh, that makes a lot of sense. I fall asleep to a lot of Seinfeld. It's in my brain. You know what I mean? I just want to – I think that's a, a big thing for most of my, uh, like, life endeavors. I just want to be, like, you know, not – look to not be perceived poorly and you don't get perceived poorly when you're in the mass you know it's very hard to single somebody out when they're in a mass group but other things it's like i want to do the as best as possible like as best i can like uh, telling jokes and the podcast and everything and speaking of which i do have to talk about this but there's been a large influx of downloads so if this is like the newest episode you're listening to because you're catching up i would like to formally apologize that you had to listen to 83 other episodes where I'm trying to figure myself out and maybe I figure myself out here on this uh, 83rd. I think this is 83 actually. I have yet to go back and listen to those early on episodes. I've had friends tell me, bro, just do it. 
it's like if you're ever down listen to how you sounded <laughs> like two years ago and then uh, you'll be like oh i actually am not as bad as i think i am it's kind of funny though and and we all have that and i'm sure i'm sure there's people that you know work on excel spreadsheets all day and then they think about the work they did whenever they were in college and the work they do now and they're like wow i would go back and, and punch myself in the face if i saw what i was doing you know that's how i feel sometimes and uh I, I kind of got that, um, you know, going back in time and punching myself in the face feeling and, and the reservations with guitar, trying to tie this all together here. Um, I had been reserving the these Christmas movies that I love this year because I hadn't really felt the Christmas spirit. I think I think that's going around, folks. So you better watch out. And not only is COVID going around, but the lack of Christmas spirit is also going around. And. I think everybody's going through this, and so I'm reserving these movies that I really like for special times, and I still have not watched them. You know, Elf. I find I did watch Christmas Vacation. I'll tell I'll tell a story about that here, and I haven't watched Four Christmases. That those are my two: Elf, Four Christmases, uh, and and Christmas Vacation. So I was over at a friend's uh, parents' house. We'll call him Mr. B. Mr. B has been a very uh, nice guy to me my entire life, and. You know, he he essentially set me down. I felt like I was his own son, and he set me down. And we were talking about Christmas and reserving the movie for this time, and and because you wanted to have this feeling while you watched it. And he goes, "Stop chasing that feeling." He's like, "Stop chasing Christmas past and stop chasing the perfect Christmas." I think I had really good Christmases. I think there was always something missing. And he and I both find ourselves always we we share this feeling. We get sad on Christmas. I get very bummed out on Christmas. The hype up, the building, the yeah, 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 yeah. Christmas spirit. The day after Thanksgiving is the best day. Black Friday is the best day for the Christmas spirit. You know, everybody's wanting to buy things. Capitalism, greed, consuming everyone. It's great, you know. And 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 you're in indoors, and it's cold outside, but it's warm inside. And your family's around, and you're laughing, and you're sharing stories. It doesn't even have to be family necessary. My parents went, there was like three times they went to a, a resort for Thanksgiving and, you know, and I did whatever it is I do. My best friend took me in one Thanksgiving. That was really sweet of him. So shout out to that family. You know who you are. And I think, I think really what I'm chasing on this Christmas morn is, you know, I have, we all got our PJs on and, and it's snowing outside and you, know, you have the fireplace and the music playing and everybody comes in and opens gifts and laughs and shares stories. And, and that's really what I'm going for. And I haven't had that in a while. I don't know if I've ever had that. I don't think I've had the whole thing. I think I've had pieces of, of that. I don't think I've had the whole thing. And I think that's what I'm chasing, this Christmas feeling. And I haven't gotten it. And so he says, like, stop chasing that feeling. If it's not there, it's not there. You can't force that. And so reserving those movies and stuff like that, it's it, it's it's just prolonging the inevitable that I'm going to get sad on Christmas and that worries me. I get sad I get really sad on New Year's too. And I don't know why. And I'm sure it's going to have every year it it feels the same thing. And I don't mean to be a bummer here folks and I know this isn't joking around, but I get really bummed out on New Year's and I know I'm not alone with that feeling. Everybody has that feeling and I'm watching things that are great. Steve Harvey's out there laughing. Andy Cohen's taking shots on CNN. You know, that's funny, you know. There's good music playing. People are laughing and cheering and all that stuff. And I just think like, wow, another year of my life has passed by and I'm not where I want to be. And it makes me sad. And I think a lot of us have that feeling. And not only that, I get sad about reflection in general. I get I, and I am nervous for the future. I'm opti- I'm always I'm cautiously optimistic about every 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 January 1st when the ball drops, I'm cautiously optimistic for the year upcoming and it's like oh what's gonna happen i'm worried i'm this and that you know i think we all have that feeling and uh just reflecting on the year past and i'll I'll probably be really sad a single tear might come out of my face if uh like just thinking about the crazy year that has just transpired and uh it's gonna be wild man so i'm hoping the next year is gonna be the best year yet and i hope the same for for all of you as well this Christmas and holiday season. And what song am I going to close out with here, the 20-minute uh, episode? Oh, remember to follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Franco's World underscore. Um, again, uh, 
tell the ones that you love that you love them. I think that's very normal to reach out to people. I think you should reach out to people more often, especially around the holiday season. And um, stop trying to chase that perfect Christmas because it, it, it's something that comes natural. So, you know, you're having all these reserving things, reserving the cookies, reserving the sweaters. It's something simple as that. I made a whole Christmas playlist. It's two hours of Christmas music. I listened to it five times maybe. Sporadically, not even all the way through, but I sent it to my friends and they loved it. It's weird, man. I, I guess I'm trying to chase the Christmas spirit by giving that to somebody else, by giving the the uh, playlist to somebody else. And it's Franco's Christmas Extravaganza. You can find it on Spotify. It's pretty good. Uh, what are the lyrics to the song? I'm trying to, it's the Christmas song, and I obviously I'm going to do, do a disservice to it. I cannot sing as well as Nat King Cole. I didn't smoke enough cigarettes. Um, oh, here we go. <clears throat> and so I'm offering this simple phrase to kids from 1 to 92. Although it's been said many times in many ways, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, <laughs> Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas to you and your loved ones. 